Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can get our floor tile to spawn into the game endlessly. As of right now what we've done is set up the physical appearance of the tile, however there is no endless elements to it, it's going to be something that you're going to have to place in manually. So having said that we're going to be taking a look at how we can create all of the code to get it to spawn into the game endlessly. Now what I'm going to do is take a moment to try and explain the way that we're going to get this code to work so that when we're putting it together it's going to stick in your head a little bit better. So right now we have a blueprint for our master tile and that blueprint is just under runner files and then blueprints and then master tile. What we're going to be doing is within this master tile at the end of this tile here, we are going to have a box collision and this box collision is going to fire off an event when the player collides with it, which is going to spawn a new actor of this class, which is the sport, uh, which is the floor tile and the location that it is going to spawn that actor in is at the attach point that we created here already. Now with this little arrow component, if you haven't done so already, just give it the name spawn point, just like that. So let's go ahead and start working on this. So first things first, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have a box collision. And this box collision needs to be at the end of the tile. And like I said, when the player runs through this box collision, it is going to spawn a new tile. So with this box collision, make sure it is the full width of your floor tile and make sure it is also nice and tall as well. So that even if the player does jump, they are still going to go through it. So what you should have by the end of your little scaling, it should look a little bit something like this and make sure it's just before the end point there. So once we've done this, what we're going to do is with this box collision selected, we are going to create a begin overlap event for this. The way you're going to do it is select it, go to your details panel and scroll all the way down to the bottom and find begin overlap. And then just press the little plus icon to add it and go to your event graph. And what we're going to be doing within here is we are essentially going to be checking to see whether or not the character has overlapped it. So drag out from other actor and cast to the third person character. And then what we're going to be doing from here is casting to the game mode and firing off a function for spawning in the tiles. Now we haven't made that function just yet. So what we're going to do is compile this and then swap over to our third person game mode. Within our third person game mode, make sure you open up your full blueprint editor if you haven't done so already. And then on the left hand side, we are going to create a new function with the name spawn tile. And within here, what we're going to be doing is spawning in a tile and setting the location of the next tile to be spawned in. So the way we're going to do this is spawn an actor from class and then with the class type we're going to set this to our master tile which is the blueprint that we set up already. And then for the spawn transform which is basically where it's going to be spawned in the world so location, rotation and scale we are going to promote this to a variable and we are going to give this the name next spawn point and we're just going to drag it down and make it nice and clear just like that. Once we have spawned it in what we're going to do is cast to the master tile the one that we've just created and get the location of that spawn point within the tile blueprint and set this as the variable and sort of where it should be spawning in that next tile. So it's basically going to be endlessly updating itself each time it spawns in a tile. So the way we're going to do this is as master tile, we are going to get spawn point. 
And to find that, you might have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and get your spawn point, which is your arrow component that you created already. With this, we are going to get the location of this. So type in get world location. And what we're going to do from the cast to master tile, we are going to set the next spawn point equal to the location of here. And the way we're going to do this is hold down alt, right click and split your structure pin. And the way that transform works, as you know, it is going to cover location, rotation and scale. The only piece of information that we're trying to get from that spawn point is the location. And if we hit compile, what we can do now is call this function to spawn a tile. So if I was to go back into my runner files and into my master tile, after you overlap with that trigger, we can now cast to the third person game mode. And as the third person game mode, we can spawn a tile when you run over the end of that tile. So hopefully this is making starting to make sense. So when you run over the end of your tile, as you can see in your viewport, it is going to fire off an event, which is going to tell the engine to spawn in a new tile at the location of the next spawn point. Within your master tile, make sure you set your object wildcard is equal to get game mode. And then we are good to go. Now, if we were to press play, jump in and go onto this tile that we've created here, it should be spawning in those tiles. Now, if it isn't straight away, that's not so much of an issue. All we've got to do is just, first of all, set up a proper level for it. Because at the moment in this level, it's just not really gonna work. So go to file, new level, of the type default and then just delete the space here. Now what you want to do is spawn a couple of tiles in when you first get your game. So what we're going to do is within our third person game mode go to your event graph tab and use the begin play node to use a loop, a for loop which is just going to run that spawn tile function 10 times. So what you should have is something that looks like this. So first index 0, last index 9, and the loop body should be equal to spawn tiles. So basically what it's doing is looping from 0 to 9 and spawning in some tiles. Hit compile, hit play, and what you should have now is the main functionality of your endless runner. You can see if I eject that what it is doing is when it gets to the end of the tile, it is spawning in a new one, and we now have our procedurally generated tiles in our game. Now notice, as you go past the tile, they're not destroying themselves, and that's not great for performance. So what you're gonna want to do is within your master tile, after you've spawned in the new tile, we are going to add a delay of about 0.5 seconds and then tell the engine to destroy the actor and because we're already within that master tile blueprint and we have this equal to self it is going to destroy itself so if we go ahead and press play again eject you can see after half a second it is going to be destroying the tiles behind you and if we zoom in and we look forwards, it just looks as if we are running forwards endlessly. And you can turn left and right and all of that good stuff. So anyway guys, that is pretty much everything that I wanted to teach you in today's video. We still got loads left such as uh, moving between lanes to lanes, obstacles, pickups, and all of that good stuff. But once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.